Good morning, guys. Today is Thursday, June 18. Thursday, June 18. Welcome to the review. The vocabulary review is this. Vocabulary numbers. 100. Repeat after me. 100. 200. 300. 400, 500, 600, 700. One moment. 800, 900, 1000, 2000, 3000. 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. Okay? Very good, guys. Pay examples. 827. 3,462, 7,521, 999, okay? Very good, guys. Okay, this is the, se uh, the second vocabulary. Number one, hatchet, acha, hatchet. Acha, quill, pluma, smolderet, ardiendo, smolderet, ardiendo, ignite, encender, ignite, encender, pace taking, esmerado, pace taking, esmerado, registered, registrado, registered, registrado. Steel, rígido. Steel, rígido. Fever, fiebre. Fever, fiebre. Jungle, jungla. Jungle, jungla. Crescent, creciente. Crescent, creciente. Vehicle, vehículo. Vehicle, vehículo. Examen, examinar. Examen, examinar. Symptom, síntoma. Symptom, síntoma. Recover, recuperar. Recover, recuperar. Very good, guys. Okay, this is the other vocabulary. Application, solicitud o aplicación. Application, solicitud o aplicación. Engard, comprometido. Engard, comprometido. Recital, recital. Recital, recital. Dramatic, dramática o dramático. Momento de suma importancia. Prejudice, perjudicar. Pre prejudice, perjudicar. Privilege, privilegiada. Formal, formal. Opera, ópera. Planet, planeta. Culture, cultura. Joy, alegrías, gozo o júbilo. Roots, raíces. Roots, raíces. Very good. Origis, rarezas. Origis, rarezas. Very good. Ok, very good. This is the science review. Tornado. What is a tornado? A tornado is a violent air. What is a tornado? A tornado is a violent rotating column of air extending from and the, from and thunderstorm the, to the ground. The most violent tornadoes are capable of tremendous destruction with the wind speeds of up to 300 mph. 
They can destroy large buildings of rot trees and the whole vehicles hundreds of years. What is the tornado? A tornado is a violent rotating column of a air standing from the thunderstorm to the ground. Okay? To the ground. Very good. What is a funnel cloud? What is a funnel cloud? A funnel cloud is a rotating a corner shaped column of air standing downward from the base of a thunderstorm, but no touching the ground. What is the funnel cloud? A funnel cloud is a rotating cone shaped column of air standing downward from the base of a thunderstorm. Okay? Very good. Hurricane. Hurricane. What is a hurricane? What is a hurricane? A hurricane is a home storm. Okay? A hurricane is a home storm. Very good. When does hurricane season start? When does hurricane season start? The Atlantic hurricane season is from June 1 to November 30. But most hurricanes occur during the fall months. The, the Eastern uh, Pacific hurricane season is from May 15 to November 30. Okay? The Atlantic hurricane season, the June 1 to November 30. And the uh, Eastern Pacific the, uh, is from May 15 to November 30. Okay? Very good. Okay, very good. This was a guide of vocabulary and science. Okay, I study the vocabularies and I study the questions. Okay. Good morning, guys. Today is Thursday, June 18. Thursday, June 18. Welcome to the review. The vocabulary review is this. Vocabulary, numbers, 100, repeat after me, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, Moment. Eight hundred, nine hundred, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, six thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand, nine. Thousand, ten thousand. Okay. Very good, guys. Pay examples. Eight hundred twenty-seven. Three thousand four hundred sixty-two. Seven thousand five hundred twenty-one. 999 okay very good guys okay this is the se uh, the second vocabulary number 1 hatchet acha hatchet acha quill pluma smolder ardiendo smolder ardiendo i night Encender, ignite, encender. Face taking, esmerado. Face taking, esmerado. Registered, registrado. Registered, registrado. Steel, rígido. Steel, rígido. Fever, fiebre. Fever, fiebre. Jungle, jungla. 
Jungle, jungla. Crescent, creciente. Crescent, creciente. Vehicle, vehículo. Vehicle, vehículo. Examine, examinar. Examine, examinar. Symptom, síntoma. Symptom, síntoma. Recover, recuperar. Recover, recuperar. Very good, guys. Okay, this is the other vocabulary. Application, solicitud o aplicación. Application, solicitud o aplicación. Engard, comprometido. Engard, comprometido. Recital, recital. Recital, recital. Dramatic, dramática o dramático. Momento de suma importancia. Prejudice, perjudicar. Pre prejudice, perjudicar. Privilege, privilegiada. Formal, formal. Opera, ópera. Planet, planeta. Culture, cultura. Joy, alegrías, gozo o júbilo. Roots, raíces. Roots, raíces. Very good. Origis, rarezas. Origis, rarezas. Very good. Okay, very good. This is the science review. Tornado. What is a tornado? A tornado is a violent air. What is a tornado? A tornado is a violent rotating column of air extending from and from and thunderstorm to the ground. The most violent tornadoes are capable of tremendous destruction with the wind spe speeds of up to 300 mph. They can destroy large buildings, uproot trees, and the whole vehicles hundreds of years. What is a tornado? A tornado is a violent rotating column of a air extending from the thunderstorm to the ground. Okay? To the ground. Very good. What is a funnel cloud? What is a funnel cloud? A funnel cloud is a rotating a corner shaped column of air extending downward from the base of a thunderstorm, but no touching the ground. What is the funnel cloud? A funnel cloud is a rotating, cone shaped column of air extending downward from the base of a thunderstorm. Okay? Very good. Hurricane. Hurricane. What is a hurricane? What is a hurricane? A hurricane is a home storm. Okay? A hurricane is a home storm. Very good. When does hurricane season start? When does hurricane season start? The Atlantic hurricane season is from June 1 to November 3rd. But most hurricanes occur during the fall months. The Eastern uh, Pacific hurricane season is from May 15 to November 30. Okay? The Atlantic hurricane season, the June 1 to November 3rd. And the uh, Eastern Pacific the, uh, is from May 15 to November 3rd. Okay? Very good. Okay, very good. This was a guide of vocabulary and science, okay? Study the vocabularies and study the questions, okay? Hello, good morning students. Welcome back to our channel where we have our English class. My name is Teacher Fernanda and I'm very happy and grateful to be here with you today in another class, in another day. I hope you are fine. I hope you are all right, safe and sound at home with your family. I hope your family is doing okay. And well, today we're going to have a review for your exam. We're going to check um, the first, the topics that are going to be 
um, in the grammar section first and then in the reading section. So we're going to go with a review of the topics that are going to be in the exam. The topics that are going to be in the exam are the following, but uh, I'm, I'm going to present you first the time, the time order words, which we already checked before. All right, so we know from previous, um, from the previous class that time order words are those words that signal in which order did the, the events happen. So for example, maybe if you are doing, uh, if you're writing uh, uh, a text of, uh, of a, a day or something that happened to you, you're going to start with the right words to specify that that one event happened in the first place and then the other event happened in the second place and so on. So as the definition can read, it says that time order words signal the order in which events happen. They allow readers to understand the sequence of events. For example, first we measured the perfume into the beaker. Following that, we poured it into a design bottle. Finally, we labeled the bottle for display. So this is a text which has a sequence, all right? It's, it follows an order sequence, so it is going to use time order words. For example, here we've got that first, so this is the first event, the event number one, this happened. They measured the perfume into the beaker. Then following that, the second event, we poured it into its designated bottle. That is the second event in, in, this, in this text. And finally, they labeled the bottle for display. So it is the third event and it is the final event as well. It follows a sequence, if you can know, notice, sorry. We have first, we have the event that comes up to the first one and the final event that is the third one. Time order words establish clarity in our writing. As we, I said before, if you don't have time, if you don't use time words, um, time order words or time order expressions, then your your text um, writing is going to be confusing. So more your readers won't know when the things happen in the first place. Time order words can be placed anywhere in a sentence. The popular placement is at the start of a paragraph. When they come at the start of a sentence of a paragraph, they're typically followed by a comma. For example, in conclusion, the final product was spectacular, or consequently, it went, it went on sorry, to become an international bestseller. So they're often placed in the beginning of the sentence. It's a very common place to to use the time order expressions. I wanted to pay a lot of attention in this section. This, ex this section is the time order word list. So we're going to check first in the column that, in the column that says before. So the column that says before, it's focused on the events that happen before we are speaking. For example, if you are telling a story to a friend and you use these type of expressions, then you're going to tell a, a, an event that happened before you start um, talking with this person. For example, you can tell that person, yesterday I was eating a hamburger. So this event happened before you started talking with your friend. So in the before section, we have the next words earlier, previously, formerly, previous to, in the past, prior to, preceding that, yesterday, last time, until that time, and in advance. So all of these words are defining a timeline before you start speaking. Or for example, if you start writing, maybe you're going, obviously you're going to tell a story that happened in the past, then you're going to use the before section words to establish a period of time before that past time. For example, if I tell you, I'm going to, tell, to talk to you about 
the last time I went to the beach and then I'm going to to tell you the story of what happened when I went to the beach then we have the words that define the first event in our texts we have that this event is the first that happens in the in the story or in the text you're telling and we have that those expressions are to begin starting with initially originally at the onset onset sorry at the beginning to begin with at the outset before all else in the first place and to start with so this depends they establish the sequence of the events these expressions establish the sequence of the events that happen in the text or in the in the story that you maybe are telling then we have the words that are for ex so to say the second event that happened in the in the text in spanish we know them as después so these words are used when we want to express what happens next we have the words after, consequently, following, in turn, second, soon after. This one is very common. Then, henceforth, third, subsequently, and later. So all of these columns are to express uh, the events that happened after the first event. The, it happens the first event, and then the events that happen next are the ones that you can use with these expressions. Then we have the sometimes words. The sometimes words are going to be um, focused on actions that you may repeat so, uh, in sometimes, as its name says. So, for example, I can tell you the story of uh, maybe when I visited my grandma. I can say, I used to visit my grandma at times, or from time to time, I visited my grandma or I would visit my grandma occasionally. It means that sometimes I used to visit my grandma, or for example, if I repeat an action um, several times as to eating in a restaurant, for example, I can say, sometimes my family and I used to eat at McDonald's, or occasionally my family and I would, would eat at McDonald's. So these are, these are actions that can repeat that can be repeated this, uh, these actions are repeated from time to time not always just from time to time that is why it's called sometimes and last the last column are those words which are the final event in their text so for example i can say that the last event is the is, as its name says is the one that happens at the end of the story or at the end of the text you're, you're using or you're you're saying you're telling sorry so let me read this column for you first and then this column for you later the column from sometimes do you use these expressions from at times from time to time occasionally periodically rarely seldomly some of the time every so often on occasion every now and then and intermittently and the ones you use for last that remember that is there are the events that happen at the end we use finally in conclusion to conclude in the end ultimately to finish at the end lastly at last in the long run and at long last so this 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 one's are the ones who are going these words are the ones that are going to establish a sequence in texts or stories some events in a story happen simultaneously or at the same time clue words such as while during meanwhile and at the same time are signals or simultaneous events as we said in the previous lesson some events happen at the same time for example i can say that while i am re recording this lesson my sister is asleep or while i am recording this lesson my mother is cooking so if these events happen at the same time they are simultaneously 
Yes, they happen in the same period of time, but they are different actions. And you have these clue words such as while, during, meanwhile, and at the same time. We have some examples in sentences such as at the beginning, I was surprised. Yes, at, in, at the beginning, at very first. Anita has gone to Los Angeles previously. So this means that before we're speaking, before we are, are, are talking, you and I, my friend Anita has gone to Los Angeles previously. Or maybe I'm talking to you about Anita. Maybe I'm telling you, hey, you know what? Anita is traveling to New York now. And then I tell you, but Anita has gone to Los Angeles previously. Before she went to New York, before this action, she did another action, which, which is to go to Los Angeles. Soon after Paloma arrived, she fell asleep. After she arrived, the second action in this, in this sentence, she fell asleep. So first she arrived and then she fell asleep. Antonio rarely left his house. So this means that Antonio sometimes, not very often, would leave his house. Yes, remember, he repeated this action, but not always. And lastly, we went to visit my grandma. So in the final, the final event in this sentence is that they went and visited his, their grandma. And we have these examples in the text here. Let me read it for you, then I will um, show you the sequence in these words. This part is also very important, so you need to pay attention. My family and I went to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The first thing we did when we got there was to take a tour of a space shuttle that once flew into space. During our tour, an astronaut sho showed us her, spa her spaces. I even got to try on the space boots. Next, we taste the food astronauts eat while they are in space. It was really different from other foods that I've had eaten, but it tasted pretty good. Finally, we got into a special boot that showed us what it's like to be weightless. It was an amazing day. So here, it is very clear which events happen first which events happened later, which events happened at the end. So for the first event here is that the first thing they did when they got there was to take a tour of a space shuttle that, was, that once was into space. So this is the first event. During our tour, an astronaut showed us her spacesuit. I even got to try on the space suits. This, this event, it's, um, it's an event that, happen that shows, shows events that happen in the same time, yes, simultaneously. Because while they're in the tour, the astronaut showed them their space, her spacesuit. So these events happen in the simultaneous um, period of time. Next, we taste the food astronauts eat next. This event happened next, okay? It's our second event in, in these in this t in this story they tasted the food astronauts eat while they're in space this while shows also a simultaneous events simultaneous events that happen in the same period of time while they're in space they eat this kind of food two actions at the same time and here finally we got in a special Food that showed us what it's like to be weightless. So this event happened at the end. This was the last event in this story, in this sequence of events that happened in this text or in this story that you're telling. All right, so that was all for this review of this topic. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us because it's very important for you to to understand this topic because it's going to be in your exam. I'm going to continue with the next topic in a moment. Hello students, so this is the next topic we're going to check in the grammar section, which is the one of possessive pronouns that we checked recently. So what are possessive pronouns? 
Possessive pronouns are words which give ownership to someone or something. So in this case, for example, we have Lily and we have Lily's jacket here. We know that this jacket is Lily's. So it is correct for us to say that it, that, that jacket is hers, hers being the possessive pronoun in this case. We're going to check the possessive pronouns in a second. They are pronouns, so they substitute noun phrases and avoid repeating information that has been made. So possessive pronouns are going to be used to avoid repetition in a sentence. All right, so for example, if you are talking about a certain noun or a noun phrase that is going to be repeated and repeated, then possessive pronouns can avoid that repetition, can take it out. For example, those cookies are mine. Mine as the possessive pronoun in this case, indicating that these cookies belong to me. All right? Mine is the possessive pronoun in this case. These cookies, those cookies are mine. They belong to me. I'm the owner of these cookies, of those cookies, sorry. Table of possessive pronouns. Sorry. Let me go back. The table of possessive pronouns is the next one. The table of possessive pronouns is very important, so you must pay attention to this part. The personal pronoun here is I. We already know this. The possessive pronoun for I is mine. Then we have the personal pronoun you. The possessive pronoun for you is yours. Then we've got the personal pronoun he. The possessive pronoun for he is his. Then we've got personal pronoun she. And the possessive pronoun for she is hers. Then we've got the personal pronoun it. It, sorry. And the possessive pronoun it's. It's not very common to use this section. This as possessive pronouns. But still, we're going to explain it. And then we've got the personal pronoun we. The possessive pronoun for we is ours. And finally, we've got they, and the possessive pronoun for they, it's theirs. The you can be singular and plural, so that's why it doesn't repeat again in this section. So we've got that I is mine, you is yours, he is his, she is hers, it is its, we is ours, and they, theirs. All right, so it's very important for you to know that here in this in this case, when we write theirs as the possessive pronoun, we don't write it with the Y. We don't write it with this letter. Let me show you. So here we have a Y here, they, but here we have an I. Then we have that possessive pronouns avoid repetition. For example, we have this sentence here, which is, this cell phone is my cell phone. It is not your cell phone. So we have the word cell phone thrice. We have, this cell phone is my cell phone. It is not your cell phone. So it repeated three times. So to avoid that repetition, we're going to do the next, as in this text reads, as you can see in this sentence, we say three times cell phone. The sentence is correct, it is grammatically correct, but it doesn't sound good because it repeats the same word three times, which is the noun. When we use the possessive pronouns, we avoid repeating the noun, in this case, cell phone. And here is the sentence that we changed. This cell phone is mine, it is not yours. So here, we already change it for the possessive pronouns to indicate that this cell phone is mine. It belongs to me. It is not yours. It doesn't belong to you. The possessive pronouns mine and yours substitute the possessive adjectives and the nouns. Let's check the phrase, the first sentence. This cell phone is my cell phone. So we're going to take it out and write the possessive pronoun mine because we already know we're, we're talking about a cell phone. 
so it's unnecessary to repeat the word cell phone again and again this cell phone is my cell phone it's mine it is not your cell phone so we're going to take out the your cell phone phrase and we're going to add the possessive noun pronoun yours so it's going to be myself this cell phone is mine it's mine it belongs to me it is not yours it doesn't belong to you we already know we're talking about a cell phone here mine substitutes your my cell phone and your substitutes your cell phone Singulars and plurals. The possessive pronouns are always the same for singulars and plural nouns. So the next example is the next one. Is this your pencil? One pencil. We're talking about one pencil here. Yes, it is mine. It belongs to me, says Jacob. And then in this case, this is a singular pencil. In the plural one, it says, are these your colored pencils? Pencils in plural yes they are mine all right the personal the possessive pronoun is going to be the same it's going to remain the same it says that possessive pronouns do not have an apostrophe it's very important also to note that possessive pronouns don't have an apostrophe why because many of your partners in their homework write this with apostrophe it's going to be like this is that yours hers ours theirs with the s with no apostrophe and it's not going to be yours hers ours theirs no apostrophe but possessive pronouns do not have apostrophe then we have here the possessive pronouns um there are some forms of expressing possession. One of the most common ones is using possessive pronouns. They are in accordance to the subject. They don't change with the item, animal, person that is possessed, no matter if it's female or male, plural or singular. So for example, I can say, that dress is mine. That pencil is mine. That cat is mine. All right, so it does, it, dep it depends in, in the subject of the sentence but not in the not in the in the possessed object the form of possessive pronouns are, is always the same as i said previously it doesn't change possessive pronouns possessive pronouns are words used to indicate that something belongs to someone or has a direct relationship with someone else mine her parents were far more liberal than mine here we're talking about parents yes and we know here that her parents the parents of uh, a, a girl were more liberal than my parents so we don't need to repeat my parents again yours you probably picked up my keys instead of yours we're talking about keys so it says that you you probably pick up my keys my keys instead of yours instead of your keys his you probably pick up my keys instead of his it means that you probably picked up my keys again we're talking about keys here instead of his his keys your account of events does not correspond with hers here we're talking about account of events and it says that your account of events it's not the same as hers as her account of events your dormitory is not better than ours it means that the dormitory that you own your dorm it is not better than or dormitory the one we possess theirs his view eventually prevailed over theirs we're talking about the view here he says that his view was prevailed over the view of them and yours our house is not comparable with yours it means that our house the one we own it is not comparable with your house it's 
very so it is all for the grammar section it is very important for you to study the possessive pronoun table yes and in the accordance with uh, personal pronouns and subject and possessive pronouns so yes study the table very much it's going to be very important for you so it would be all for the grammar section now now let's go to the reading section the reading class section we're going to go to the topic of search engines again it's also very important for you to to pay attention if you need it take notes because it's going to be very important for you in your exam what are search engines let me go back a search engine is an online tool it searches for results in its database based on the search query it means the keywords submitted by the internet user the results are usually websites that semantically match with the search query so here what it's very important for you to notice is that a search engine is an online tool based to search for information all right so basically that's it that's a search engine it's an online tool that is going to help us search for information okay search engines find the results in their database sort them and make an order list of these results based on the search algorithm this list is generally called the search engine results page. So it's, re it's when, we s when we look something in, in Google, for example, we have the search result list and we're going to choose which, which site should we visit to gain the information we need to, to check. For example, it says here that there are many search engines on the market, while the most widely used is Google. Many website browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or Microsoft Edge usually come with the default search engine set as a home page or as a starting page. So these are many common browsers which have their search engine website at the as a default one so these browsers are often going to have their own search engine this is an example of how a search engine looks like and you already know the most common one which is google so here is this is the the your uh, url bar this is this one is a search bar and this is the button you use to look for your for your results. This is the search engine results page. As I told you, I I did my I, I searched for the word for the for what are search engines. I wrote search engines in the in the search bar. And then I've got these results and this is the result page, all right? So I'm going to choose which which site do I want to, to read. This part is very important as well, so pay a lot of attention to it. So the most popular search engines in 2009 uh, were Google in the first place, then Baidu Search, then Bing, then Yahoo, then Yandex search, then DuckDuckGo, and at the end we have AOL search. So the most common one is Google, as we use them a lot, with the seventy-seven point fifty, uh, with the seventy-seven point fifty-seven percent. Then we've got Baidu search with the thirteen point twenty-one percent. Then we've got Bing with the with the three point sixty-one percent. Then Yahoo with the 2.33 percent then yandex search with the 1.46 percent then doctor go with the 0 0.757 percent and aol search with a 0.29 percent so 
about the main uses for search engines are the next thing. This is also a very important part, so please pay attention. For research, this is number one, research. Research can be about investigation purposes, instruction reading, you can find information such as, such as statistics, locations, or dates. So you can research a lot of information in the, in the search engines, in the internet. So research is our number one main use. Then we've got shopping. Online shopping is well, the shopping part, this is our, no, is our second main use, shopping, number two. Online shopping has increased. You can buy from groceries to deluxe products, price comparison and time saving shopping, all right? So, so online shopping is very useful in, during these times because you order your, your use, you can browse the catalog to of products you can buy for a long, a long period of time and then you can buy it with just a click so you don't need to go to that place and look there and buy the thing so you just watch the you just browse the catalog then you click to buy it and you wait for it to arrive to your home you can buy from groceries from Walmart even to deluxe products on Amazon or other sites. You can also compare the prices between two products that you, you, you looked in different sites. So it is also a very good option when you don't have time to go to buy the things. So we have research as our first main use and shopping as our second main use. Then we've got entertainment. So entertainment is our third it's our third main use of search engines. Finding media entertainment such as videos or music apps, reaching out to streaming services and finding books or audiobooks. So entertainment in with search engines can be very, 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 very extensive. So you can find media entertainment such as videos in YouTube or music apps such as Spotify or any other services that allow you to watch videos, Dailymotion, for example, or music applications. Reaching out to streaming services, all right? So these streaming services are the ones like Netflix or Amazon Prime that are going to allow you to uh, browse any series or movies you want to watch anytime. And find the books or audiobooks. You can also find a lot of books and audiobooks in many platforms in in the web. So we have that the three main uses of search engines are research, shopping, and entertainment. Students, that will be the first reading section. Wait a second, and I'm going to start the next um, section, which is the so students, this is our second reading section, which is the topic of folk tales, which we already checked to, but still we are going to give it a check as it is in your exam. So what are folk tales? We know that folk tales are a kind of story that gets passed from generation to generation, all right? So it's very important to notice that a, or grandparents used to tell parents a story and our parents tells, uh, tell us a story and we continue telling that story to the next generations that are going to to come next so this is kind this, this is what folk tales are basically true folk tales do not have a single author all right so they not have they do not have a single author because as they were passed from generation to generation the story may change depending on who told the story. They get passed from generation to generation, so they develop as different people tell them over the time. Uh, such there are creations of the po or, or the folk or the people. So these folk tales they develop differently as people tell them, because it depends on little details that they may change and they are creations of the culture and the folk of, of people in different places. 
uh, many folk tales are very old. For generations, the tales were spoken aloud and never written down. All right, for many times they were just spoken, but not written in any book or anything. Storytellers would memorize the stories and keep them alive. So storytellers were they memorize these stories and then they will tell them. All right, storytellers would sit down with people and tell the stories. Yes, they memorize the stories and they would tell them to people. Modern authors may write their own versions of popular kinds of fa traditional fairy tales, uh, traditional tales, sorry, such as fables and fairy tales. So many authors would write their own kind of folk tales. Also, folk tales that began as ancient spoken stories may now be written down in books. So um, some people adopted these folk tales and they written their their version. All right, because remember that there's no single author for folk tales, but they wrote their own version themselves and they become popular kinds of folk tales. For example, we've got The Hare and the Tortoise as a fable, and we've got um, the, the we have Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs as another kind of folk tale. The hare and the tortoise being a fable and Snow White being a fairy tale. The subjects are fairy tales. Folk, oh, folk tales, sorry. Folk tales can tell us many different parts of lives. They may tell about joys and sorrows, animals and magical beings, heroes and villains. They can be scary, funny or exciting. Different types of, of folk tales may be entertaining, some folk tales may teach a lesson or try to explain things that people do not understand. So these are, these are what folk tales can do. They can entertain, they can teach a lesson or they can try to explain things. The subjects, different cultures tell different stories. However, so similar themes appear in folk tales told in many different places and cultures. Many folk tales can be similar in in different cultures, but they are not the same as the animals that happen to be there or the stories that are told. Maybe it'll be a little different depending on on the culture that tells the story. So, for example, Japanese folk tales may not be the same as Mayan folk tales, but maybe they can talk about uh, the same topic but they're not the same about the, they, they use the same topic or similar topics but the story is not going to be the same here we have the category of folk tales folkloric tales from oral tradition fables fables which are the written form of, of the folkloric tales fairy tales folklore in general uh, such as myths and legends old wives tale the old wives tale were stories that older women used to tell to young women about many parts of life, storytelling, and performance. For a storytelling is what I told you when people sat down and there was a person that used to tell the story orally and he memorized it. So that's storytelling. And performance is when a play or a role play of the story is done as in a theater or or any other a theater sorry or any other kind of of representation here we have fables this also is very important to pay attention fables a fable is a type of folk tale that teaches a lesson all right so fables teach lessons Fables are usually entertaining tales featuring animals. They feature animals that talk and behave as people do. Okay, so all of these are fables. A fable is a type of folk tale that teaches a lesson. They are usually entertaining and they feature animals that, that, that they can talk and behave as people do. Because they have human-like qualities, the animals show how foolish or wise people can be. So this is about fables. Fables have a lesson 
they have animals representing humans and they can show how foolish or wise people can be. But some of the oldest fables came from India and Greece thousands of years ago. They're very ancient. Many fables that are familiar in English today are said to be written by, in ancient Greece by a man, a man named Aesop. So Aesop was a Greek man who is told to be to grow um, plenty of fables, a lot of them. So he is told to be the author of the torches and the hare, the ants and the grasshopper, and so many other fables. Aesop, he's the one who is is believed to have written many fables that are familiar in English. Aesop. For example, we have the three little pigs. The three little pigs teaches that hard work is important. The house built by the hardest working pig is the only one that survives the world's attacks. So this story is, many people believe it's like a fairy tale, but I believe it's a, it's a fable because it shows, it portrays human-like um, behaviors. It portrays, it has a moral of a story, a lesson, yes? So that is why I think the three little pigs are, are a fable because they have a moral of the story. Of the of if you have if you work hard, then you'll do better. And then we have fairy tales. So fairy tales are a kind of folk story that about magical events and creatures. They often tell about a young person meeting fantastic beings such as fairies, witches, giants, or dragons. Yes, usually young women or young males. Tales with no author. Stories such as Cinderella, Little Red Riding Hood, and Sleeping Beauty began as spoken folk tales with no author. So there was no author. It, they, it was just a an oral story. The Cinderella, Little Red Riding Hood, and Sleeping Beauty. Most famous fairy tale authors. Two German brothers called the Brothers Grimm create, collected and wrote down many fairy tales in the 1800s. Some modern writers such as Hans Christian Andersen invented their own fairy tales. So, Brothers Grimm, they collected many fairy tales and they wrote, it, they wrote them down as their version and they become very prominent in this area. They wrote Hansel and Gretel and they wrote, and they wrote Rob himself. Shh, Rocky. And they wrote Rob himself. Then we have Hans Christian Andersen here, which was a Danish author. He wrote The Little Mermaid. He wrote The Princess and P and many other fairy tales. So here we have an example of a fairy tale, which is The Little Mermaid by Danish author Hans Christian Andersen. We have the tales with no author. For example, The Sleeping Beauty. And we have that the most famous fairy tale authors are the Grimm brothers, the Brothers Grimm, sorry, and uh, Hans Christian Andersen. So these are the most famous fairy tale authors here. So students, that will be all for the review. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us and we will be very happy to help you. And I hope you have a lot of you have, you've had a lot of attention in in this class. You and well, good luck in your exam. May God bless you. Thank you very much.